Hi guys, with the end of the year approaching quickly, I wanted to make a video where I highlight uh, three of my favorite tools of 2019 that I'm using almost daily for data recovery. I'm gonna start the video by demonstrating two tools that uh, just became pretty much um, a go-to thing when it comes down to uh, difficult cases. Difficult cases on hard drives are platter damage cases. And for platter damage cases, there are many steps involved, but the main step of the process is uh, understanding how deep the issue really is. Back in 2018 and uh, earlier, I was inspecting uh, discs using regular light. And that was something that was effective, but it uh, was definitely not as effective as uh, the discovery that I've made uh, by watching uh, one of the colleagues work with uh, green light. Uh, for something like that, I highly recommend getting one of these uh, uh, flashlights. The links to the tool I'll post in the uh, description video below. And uh, right now, I just wanted to show you guys what this thing can really do. So it's pretty much just a green light. And I mean, even uh, painting a regular flashlight with some uh, transparent green paint will uh, pretty much make the same effect. But uh, um, green light works really, really good for uh, inspection purposes. Uh, what we have in front of us here is a six terabyte Seagate uh, Barracuda that came in uh, for recovery. Something I just noticed as I was working on this unit and uh, if you look here they even put a data recovery logo on their main logo of the drive how thoughtful we have uh, red dial scratches in the center it's a really dead giveaway that there is definitely definitely going to be some problems there uh, on this section from the edge to the first big fat scratch it almost looks clean, right? As you can see the uh, filter being reflected, you don't really notice any further damage. But look how it looks like when you apply the green light to it. Let me zoom into this. You see this? Almost looks like a vinyl record. and that's all across. This is extremely good to pick up any type of um, foreign residue, foreign uh, particles, dust, and uh, most importantly, scratches obviously. This is primarily used for me to determine whether we should go after a specific surface or if we should dump it. So this is a fairly new drive, six terabyte Barracuda Pro comes loaded with six discs on the inside. One, two, three, four, five, six. Twelve heads total. There are no currently uh, available uh, head extraction tools uh, that I know of. So um, we will have to use a good old uh, manual way to disassemble. Moving on to the tool number two uh, that uh, I was introduced to this year is a platter extractor. And the platter extractor is a pneumatic uh, vacuum activated tool that actually will also make your life a lot easier. Uh, you will need to obtain a vacuum pump, but that's something you can get on Amazon and I will also post a link to that. The tool comes with everything else that you would need. Two sets of uh, nozzles that one will be used for a two and a half inch devices and one will be used for three and a half inch devices. So if we're lifting platters uh, using uh, um, on the three and a half inch unit, we're going to use a three and a half inch nozzle. The vacuum hose just pushes into the fitting and it's sealed. On the bottom side here, we have bored out uh, holes that basically suck the air in and uh, that suction is what holds the disc um, when you pull it up. The whole construction will require a switch. Uh, the switch that I have, as you can see down here, is just a pedal. Um, the company that you buy this extraction tool from will supply a foot pedal for you. Uh, but the one I got, uh, it's basically um, momentary on, momentary off 
a pedal switch for uh, a power outlet. And every time I press on the foot pedal, this action occurs. So uh, let's go ahead and disassemble this and inspect the damage of this uh, Barracuda Pro. Yeah, you can clearly see uh, contamination levels on the surface of the sliders. Pretty much all of them have some signs of contamination. I'm just flip it upside down. Yeah, the set assembly is not in that uh, good of a shape. So the third piece of equipment uh, that I want to go over today is uh, this programmer that uh, is sold with um, this quick connection uh, attachment piece. Basically all this is is just a bunch of uh, spring-loaded needles that um, can poke into uh, the pads or the headers of the EAP ROM chip by holding this piece in place steady. Um, you can quickly and easily read out the content of EP ROM chips. This becomes a very useful feature when you're working on uh, such drives as uh, Western Digital Passports uh, and performing uh, rapid uh, SATA adaptations to do necessary work with complexes like PC3000, for example. So the first thing that we need to do is unbolt all of these uh, screws from the back of the drive. All right, so we've got both ports here, the USB and the SATA. So we need to move the firmware from uh, the USB onto the SATA. Uh, the SATA board has been used many times. We know that it's four megabit. I'm not sure about the USB one, but we'll come to that when we test it. So uh, in order to do that, we are going to uh, find the orientation on the adapter piece and line it up with the PCB. The um, uh, programmer utility and hit detect. It gives us proper ID here and it shows that it's 40, so we should be good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it. The content has been read, so we're done with this piece. And we line up the SATA board, go detect and auto.
this is where you're really gonna need to just uh, practice your patience a little bit because the process may take some time. All right, 50%. 60%, 70%, and 90%, and it's just gonna run a quick verification afterwards just to make sure everything is done and kosher. There we go, we're good. So now we can take this board, bolt it up to our hard drive. This is channel one. Set it up. The drive spins up, becomes ready. Auto detection, Marvel utility, we get full ID. And uh, with that ID, we get access to the data. And the modules. So that's uh, a really quick and efficient way to uh, uh, prepare the drive for uh, work when it comes with the PCB like this. So hopefully you guys uh, can give this a try as well. And if you have any uh, questions, Regarding it, you can post them in the comments below.